Hey guys, it's Aquila, and I'm doing another CSM video, or Circular Sock Machine video, and today we're making baby socks. So I am using my 64 stitch Earl Backer Gearheart Speedster, and this pattern was posted on a CSM website, and it's by Debbie Brandel, B-R-A-N-D-L. I'll post the name down below. So here I am just adding in fishing line, which is a rip cord. I didn't show you putting on the bonnet or waist yarn, but this is the rip cord. Now for this project, the pattern states to use every other needle, so I already took out every other needle in my cylinder. It also states to use the heel spring on at all times and to add lycra, so that's what we're going to be doing here. I had some leftover yarn from a pair of socks I made for a friend, and I'm just going to use that to do these as like a test run. There is no ribbing in this sock. It kind of makes a mock rib with every other needle out, and you will do a hung hem. So this pattern can be adjusted, obviously, like any pattern, but I believe it was 17 rows, so I'm resetting my counter. And then you hang your hem. I also did one of the socks. I can't remember. I did one. I did this one, obviously. I did two rows before I added Lycra to my machine. So I have the extra mass that I bought from CSM Supplies for the Lycra. And you can buy all different color Lycra. And it will alter the color just a tiny bit. Uh, depending on the yarn you're using. So here I am adding the Lycra into the machine. Um, the first time, the first sock I made, uh, well, I didn't make it, I failed. It was a learning experience. It was a total fail. I had to end up uh, loosening my uh, tension by two clicks and that's how I got to making these socks. When I had it at my normal tension with the heel spring on and the Lycra in, it jammed up my machine. I actually bent a needle. So here I am. I removed the weight from the bottom of the bonnet and I'm going to hang all of these stitches around. What's nice is with the ripcord, um, you can Sometimes, it depends on the color, sometimes it's harder to see, but I feel like I visually can see which stitch to hang a lot easier. Now, obviously, you do want to use a contrasting yarn, even if you are using the ripcord or not using the ripcord. I think it's very helpful and beneficial. So, you will hang half of your cylinder, and then you'll end up having to put your weight pack on the machine to crank it around about halfway and then hang the rest of your hem. Also, when you do put your weight back on, you don't want to just crank right away because the stitches that are not hung yet in that section, you kind of want to hold those down with your hand so they do not pop off the needles. So right now I'm hanging that up and there you go, me holding those stitches down. I don't take the weight all the way off sometimes. I just hold it up with my knees. It depends on if the height that you're sitting at your machine. Sometimes you can just hold the weight up a little with your legs and you'll continue hanging your hem all the way around. I always find that the last stitch to hang is a little harder to find. It's findable, I'm not going to lie, but it sometimes just doesn't want to present itself as easy. So, then you'll finish, you'll put your weight all the way back on and you will crank around. I reset my counter and you will do the leg of the sock. And I believe that was about 15 rounds. Again, this can all be adjusted. So the designer of this pattern put in a few lines about wrapping your stitches, wrapping for the toe. 
I don't know if I did that quite correctly or followed this pattern exactly, but I did my rows and now I'm using my crescent tool and I'm lifting up the back half of my stitches, which is going to be all of the short rows for the toe. So I wrapped it and then I lifted one to decrease and I'm just going to do the same thing on each side because you want to attempt to mirror whatever you do on one side on the other side. The directions in the pattern stated something about wrapping to help decrease the size of the holes in the decreases. So I'm just adding my weights here. And I'm going to continue to decrease. I decreased all the way until my normal set point that I normally stop decreasing. Now if you can see some of those needles that are lifted up on this uh, closer side, the latches have closed. That's from me lifting that strand of yarn up and wrapping. So you just need to always make sure when you put those needles back down into work that you are making sure those latches are open. Because if you do not make sure the latches are open, you will drop a stitch. <laughs> That's just the basic <laughs> workings of these machines. So I added in additional weights at the sides. I only had a weight in the center for first couple passes, but then I did add the extra weights in. I've not washed these socks yet. So I'm not quite sure how much they're going to shrink up, but now I'm doing the one up, two down method, which I am not wrapping for this part, for the increases. So when you're lifting one, you're taking one out of work, but you're putting two back into work. So technically you're still increasing one stitch. And again, I'm just doing that all the way back to my halfway point. So one up and two down. And then I'm readjusting my weights. And we are almost there. So just remember when you get back to that left hand side, you're going to stop in the front so you can put all of your needles back down into work, making sure those latches are open. We're going to then move on to the foot of the sock, which I believe was 12 rows. And then you will do a toe pretty similar. I did mine pretty similar to the heel. I wrapped and then I did my same increase again. It looks so... The fabric looks so wide and open, and I'm really hoping when I wash these that the lycra really cinches it all back in. So we're back to halfway, and then I'm going to do the toe, and I'm going to do it the same way. Lifting a stitch and wrapping, wrapping a needle and lifting a stitch to decrease. Moving my weights. And then continuing the same pattern, lifting and wrapping on one side to the other. And if you've been making socks on your machine, you know the toe is always a little bit different because when you get back to fully increased stitches, you usually aren't pushing that needle uh, down into work on the one side because you want it to be exactly half and half stitches. So when you Kitchener them, they are the equal amount of stitches to Kitchener closed. So we're just gonna continue doing this.
Now I have never made this pattern before and I would probably try it a few times over again. Uh, the pattern calls for using a smaller cylinder. I'm using a larger cylinder. It might be why my socks came out a little bit larger. Also, uh, I could change how I increased. Maybe I should have been wrapping. Maybe it would give less holes on the side. I don't think it gave a lot of holes. There's the last push down on the right hand side. You don't push any more down on that side and you only push them down on the left hand side. That's what I was talking about the difference for the toe because now you have half and half. You will cut your yarn leaving a long enough tail to Kitchener your toe closed. I on this sock forgot to take my lycra off. I on the first sock stopped using lycra about uh, halfway through the toe so when I got to the Kitchener part um, I wouldn't have lycra on the one side. It would have been on the other side, obviously. Uh, some people stop before they start the toe, so the lycra is not there at all when they're kitchenering. That's, again, total preference of what you want to do. So I've just tucked that tail down into the tube. I'm putting some waste yarn on my machine, and I will crank that on so I have something to hold all those live stitches so I can Kitchener it closed. Again here you want to use a contrasting yarn because you want to be able to visually see what is your working yarn versus your waste yarn. Another point of using the ripcord, I reuse a lot of my waste yarn so I also reuse all my toe waste yarn too because I just take it off and reball it. And I have a little container of little balls of waste yarn. So because I had my heel spring back on, I'm just holding those stitches really tight. Because if not, it would try to suck the yarn back up into the mast because of the heel spring. And again, making sure all your latches are open before you crank around. I typically do between 13 to 15 rows of waste yarn just so it is ensuring that if a stitch does run it will hopefully not run into my project and then you will take this off of the machine which is my favorite part <laughs> it's fun watching it just all the needles come off all the, the stitches come off tucking the tail in holding my weights cranking off <laughs> it's my favorite part now I will show you guys that I take it off the ripcord from the waste yarn from the bonnet and I just think this is mesmerizing too so I'm just getting all my weights off. I'm going to show you guys there's my ripcord, the hung hem, the waste yarn. You'll go to the opposite side and you will just pull that right out of there. And then you can reuse your waist yarn. I love it. And here is the sock without the toe closed. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any suggestions or questions, please let me know. Thanks. Bye.